Hello. The pink fraction test was given to students, and I know that you have a variety of different experiences with fractions in your past, uh, but the gold corrective that we had for this fraction test is one of the most commonly missed assignments. So I wanted to, over this weekend, right before your first quarter grades, go over the fraction test so that you could do your gold corrective. So I'm going to do the fraction test as a think aloud so you can hear all the processes, and then you're going to need to use your gold corrective sheets for any of the problems that you got wrong and explain the problems out. You writing and communicating in sentences about the steps really will help you remember about fractions. I know that as long as we've got fractions down, you're going to be just fine for future math classes, but I know that at the high school they really, really want you to know fractions, and it's something that we just can't skip over. We've got to make sure you know them. So starting off, we're going to remind ourselves that the entire front of this test is multiplication and division. For multiplication and division, we're going to change them into fractions first. We're going to use the phrase bottom times the big add the top. That's where you take the denominator times the whole number and add the numerator to make an improper fraction. You have notes in your ISF. They are pink, having to do with fractions. Please use those notes also in addition to this YouTube video. Thanks. For multiplying, and for all the problems on this page, I'm just going to cruise through very quickly and do bottom times the big at the top. So, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10, over 3, times 3 fifths. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15 over 4. 10 times 1 is 10, plus 2 is 12, over 10. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16, over 3. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9, over 8. And I'll pause right there. So those top three, you can see we made them into fractions first. That's our first job. We abbreviate that with FF, fractions first. And we're going to do that for both multiplication and division. Next, you're going to look to see if there's any greatest common factor that you can divide both a numerator and a denominator by to make the numbers smaller and easier to work with. For example, when you have twins like the 3 and the 3, those easily can be divided by the greatest common factor of 3. We're going to use factor bubbles to show the division. Now you may think, oh, that's harder. But a lot of the time, students end up crossing out the numbers and making them into the opposite number, the number they're supposed to divide by, instead of the number that would be the result. So those help you control. We also don't use rings. We're going to be using rings when we do proportions in Chapter 5. So 3 divided by 3 becomes 1. Now we see that the 10 and the 5 can both be factored also by the greatest common factor of 5. So we're going to divide those both by 5. 10 divided by 5 becomes a 2. Again, some children would have changed it into a 5 by accident because they didn't put this divided by bubble. So to avoid that, we just show the control, and eventually you'll get to drop these off just like you dropped off training wheels on a bicycle. You won't need them for forever, but while you're cementing this fraction skill set, you want to use these as a guide. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Now you're going to take your new numerators, 2 times 1, and multiply straight across the top, and your new denominators, 1 times 1, multiply straight across the bottom, and you get 2 divided by 1. But that is not, according to the rules, simplified. So to simplify the answers, you need to say that 2 divided by 1 is the whole number 2. And that's it. Down on number two, we've already made them into fractions first. So we're looking for factor bubble opportunities. 10 and 15 can both be divided by 5. It doesn't have to be one of the numbers. It's just the greatest common factor, the number that evenly goes into both of those numbers. So 10 divided by 5 becomes a 2. 15 divided by 5 becomes a 3. 4 and 12 can both be divided by a greatest common factor of 4.
it's nice when one goes into the other because then you know that this one's going to turn into a 1 and 1s are the easiest numbers to work with. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now it's time to multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom with your new numbers. 3 times 3 is 9. 1 times 2 is 2. This is an improper fraction, so we're going to divide it. We've used the phrase in and out. Thinking of the burger place as a reminder. In is the top number, and out is the denominator, the bottom number. But another way you could think about it, if that gets you confused, is top number goes under. Top number goes under. Kind of rhymes. 2 goes into 9 four times. 4 times 2 is 8. Subtract, you get 1 remaining. That becomes your new numerator. And the denominator is the same number that was the divisor. So it's 4 and 1 half. Your final answer equals 4 and 1 half. Okay, number 3. We've changed them into fractions first, so we're looking for factor bubble opportunities. 8 and 16 can both be divided by 8, which is great. I don't want to multiply by 16. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 16 divided by 8 is 2. Much easier. 3 and 9 can both be divided by 3. I made this test so you could factor all over the place. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now you're multiplying again with your new numerator. Your new numerators, 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 1 is 1. 6 over 1 equals 6. Okay. Number 4 and 5 have a simple way to change these into fractions first. They're whole numbers. So with a whole number, you're just going to put it over 1. That was it. 7 is equal to <clears throat> 7 divided by 1. Now again, you're looking to see if there are any things you can factor. And I can see that the 7 and the 49 can both be divided by 7. You may say, well, the 14 can be divided by 7 also. But remember, like in class, we said that it was like an outfit. You have to have a top and a bottom. You don't want to have two tops. That wouldn't be okay. Because really, we're taking the two numbers on the top and the bottom. I'll use the threes. And we're making a fraction, 3 over 3. 3 over 3 equals 1. <clears throat> Sorry. Anytime you divide by or multiply by anything that equals to 1, you're using the identity property and it doesn't change the identity of the number. It doesn't change what it really equals. <clears throat> okay, so 7 divided by 7 becomes a 1. 49 divided by 7 becomes a 7. Now, this 14 and this 7 can be divided. You may think, don't they have to be across from each other? No, they do not. Any top with any bottom, just like an outfit. So you're going to divide this by 7, divide this by 7, and you get 2 and 1. Now we're going to multiply straight across the top with our new numbers. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 over 1 equals 2. Okay, number 5 has a 1 on top and 1 on bottom. You can't go smaller than 1. If 1, those are done. But the 12 and the 4 can both be divided by 4. So your answer is 3 times 1 is 3 over 1, which equals 3. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do the division, and then I'm going to need to do a new video when I do the um, other side. So there's going to be two different videos because I found out I can't go longer than 15 minutes on a YouTube video. For dividing, we're going to remember the dividing detour. The dividing detour is keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. But before we do anything, we have to change them into fractions first. This number is not a fraction. It's a mixed number. This number is fine, and I'm going to write a little bit smaller because we're going to need a little bit more space when we do the next step. Still divided by, and then I do bottom times the big, add the top to get 5 over 4. That was the fraction first step. Now it's time to use keep, change, flip. 
So we're going to keep the 5 eighths, change the operation to multiplication, and flip the second number. So this is where instead of dividing fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. That's the flip of this second number. But it's easier for me to remember, keep the first term, change the sign from division to multiplication, and flip the second term only. Keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. And so that's what I think of. We've got twins, so those obviously can divide both by 5. As a matter of fact, I think that you guys know by now, if you have twins, they're going to turn into 1s. So we don't need to do the factor bubbles there anymore. 8 and 4 can both be divided by 4. This becomes a 1, this becomes a 2. And we multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom with our new numbers. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2, 1 half is done. Number 7 is already fractions first. Yay! So we're going to just go ahead and do keep, change, flip. 7 over 10, keep, change, flip, uh, change the sign from division to multiplication, and flip the second term, 20 over 1. 10 and 20 can both be divided by 10. Seven times two is 14. One times one is one. 14 over one equals 14. Number eight, easy peasy to make it into a fraction. Just put it over one. Now we did fractions first. Yay! So it's time for our dividing detour. Keep, change, flip. You only use keep, change, flip for dividing. So it's the alliteration of dividing detour, keep, change, flip. But we're going to remember. So it's eight over one times three over one. There's nothing to factor there. 8 times 3 is 24, over 1 equals 24. Done. Okay, uh, 9 and 10, they both have things that we need to convert to fractions first. So I'm going to do the, both of those steps at the same time. This is 22 over 5, still divided by. This is 11 over 10. Down here, this is 12 over 1 still divided by, this is 9 over 4. Okay, so we did fractions first, and now it's time for keep, change, flip. Keep the first term, 22 over 5. Change to multiplication, flip the second term. Oh, nice. We've got a lot of great things we can factor here. So the 11 and the 22 can both be divided by 11. This becomes a 1, this becomes a 2, and the 5 and the 10 can both be divided by 5. This becomes a 1, this becomes a 2. So you're multiplying straight across the top with your new numbers. 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 1 is 1, 4 over 1 equals 4. Okay, last one, we're going to keep 12 over 1, change to multiplication, and flip. 4 on the top, 9 on the bottom. 12 and 9 have a greatest common factor of 3. We can divide them both by 3. 12 divided by 3 becomes a 4. 9 divided by 3 becomes a 3. Now we multiply straight across the top. 4 times 4 is 16 over 3, so I'm going to have to divide it. Remember, top number goes under or in and out. 3 goes into 16 5 times. That's 15. Subtract 1 left. Numerator, denominator. Remember, whatever was on the bottom goes to the top, and whatever was out here becomes the new denominator. So it equals 5 and 1 third. Yay! That's all for multiplication and division.